Magandang gabi mga kapatid. So ipagpapatuloy po natin ang ating sinimulan noong lunes ng gabi ang patungkol po sa original na iglesia na itinatag ng ating Panginoon. Ating pong ipagpapatuloy sa gabi ito mga kapatid. Particularly ang paano po natin makikilala ang tunay na iglesia. How to identify The true church built by Christ. So ito po yung tinatawag nating mga pagkakilala o no? identifying marks ng original church na itinayo po ng ating uh, Panginoon. So binabati natin na ating mga iksoon, mga kaisonan, kaisoon, diha sa Mindanao o sa Visayas, maayong gabi sa inyong tanan, mga iksoon, at sa ating po mga kakabsat. May ating mga kakapsat kahit saan, nandiyan po. Ano yung bang garabi, kata kayo amin, kakapsat. At gawin din po ang ating mga katungangan sa Bicol Region. Diyos marahay na bangki, ay Dugabos. At sa Pangasinam, Masantos Yalabi, at sa kayo amin. At dyan po sa may Carabao Island, mayad ng gabi. At dito po sa amin, may pabihing kaya ko nga. Kung kayo tagay doon sa Malaysia, salamat malay po ang ating mga pagbati. So ngayon po, tuloy na po natin ang ating pag-aaral po tungkol sa iglesia ng itinatag po ng ating Panginoon. Kaya nga po ang ating pamagat ay the original church built by Christ. So meron pong talagang itinatag po ng ating uh, Panginoon. At ang para po ng pagkakilanlan ay nakasulat po sa bagong tipan. Walang pagkakaiba kung naghahanap po tayo ng tao. Meron po siyang pagkakilanlan o identifying mark o marks. Uh, alimbawa kung may nunal sa ilong o malapad ang muka, makalbo, etc. At ang pangalan o malapad ang address, tirahan. Yan po ang mga pagkakilanlan ng isang tao, alimbawa. Gayun din po naman sa tunay na iglesia. Po. Sa dinabi dami po ng mga nakikita natin mga iba-iba klaseng mga churches sa kasalukuyang panahon, nakakalito. Yan bang lahat na mga yan ay itinatag ng Panginoon? Yan bang lahat na mga yan ay sumusunod sa kalooban ng Diyos? Yan bang lahat na mga yan ay kikilala rin ng Panginoon bilang sa Kanya? Tandaan po natin sa kalat ng Apokalipsis, mayroon po pitong iglesia ron, seven churches of Asia. Dalawa lang po kinikilalang Panginoon. Yung lima ay sinasabi niyang nagkasala na kung hindi sila magsisisi ay aalisin ang pagkakilalan, pagkakilala sa kailalang Panginoon bilang sa Kanya. So kung ito po ang pag-aaral po natin ay napakakalaga. Kung kayo po ay kabilang sa isang particular na church, tignan po ninyo yung church na ba yun na inyong kinaaniban yan din pa ang iglesia ang itinatag ng ating Panginoon. Baka naman ito yung iglesia ang itinatag ng tao. Mahalaga po kung sino ang nagtatag ng isang sangbaya. Sabi nga po sa aklat ng mga awit. Kasi kung ito po itinayo lamang ng isang tao, hindi yan kikilalanin ng Diyos. Walang kahalagahan kung pag ang nagtayo ng isang bahay ay hindi ang Diyos. Dito po sa Psalm 100 27 verse 1 Unless the Lord builds the house they labor in vain will build it Unless the Lord guards the city the watchman stays awake in vain Ang mahalaga po rito ang mapapasinat unless the Lord ito po yung L-O-R-D capital ito po yung galing sa Y-H-W-H na sa mga ibang salin ay Jehovah Ang Jehovah hindi lamang po ang ama dahil sa Old Testament, wala tayong mababasa na ang Jehovah ay ang Ama. Wala tayong mababasa gano'n. Ang Jehovah ay binubuo ng Ama, ng Anak, at ng Espiritu Santo. Yan po ang nagkakaisang Diyos. Yan ang nagkakaisang Panginoon o Jehovah. Sa ating isang pag-aaral, patunayin natin, ang Ama ay tinatang na Jehovah, ang Anak ay tinatang na Jehovah, at ang Espiritu Santo ay tinatang na Jehovah. So yun, makikita po natin, anong pagkakilanlan ng tunay na iglesia. The one true church. What are the identifying marks of the one true church? Number one, 
pangalan. The name of the church. There is no legal name, but the phrases referring to the church describe what we are or who we are. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng ganito klaseng parirala? Halimbawa, makikita natin sa Biblia, dalawang particular na pangalan, the churches of Christ, the churches of God, and church of God. Unayin po natin yung churches of God. Ano po? Ito sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14, yung ating titong hayam. Ito po ay inil in in inilagay sa plural, churches of God. Masayin po natin ano po. Sa 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 14, ito ang ating mababasa. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God which are in Judea in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, just as they did from the Judeans, the churches of God. Plural po yun. Pero kapag ito ay nag-iisa, pagka churches of God, ito po ay tumutukoy sa mga iba-ibang kongregasyon na, 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 na nasa Diyos, the churches of God. Papagtitignan lang po natin, pag ito ay nag-iisang kongregasyon, ay tinatag na the church of God. For instance, uh, sa 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, pasayin natin. Paul, called to be an apostle, or a called apostle, of Jesus Christ through the will of the God and sustenance sus our brother, to the church of God, singular, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. With all and every place, call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Pag naging isang, isang kongregasyon, it is called the Church of God. Pag ito'y tumutukoy sa maraming kongregasyon na, kay, na, na mga Kristiyano, they are called Churches of God. Na meron pa mga church, churches na tinatawang sarili nila, Church of God. At sinasabi nila, ang tamang pangalan, Nag-iglesia yung itinayo ng Panginoon ay Church of God. Wala naman po mas problema doon dahil tama po yung pangalan na yun. At sila, pero sinasabi nila, wala tayong mababasang Church of Christ sa Biblia. Oh yes, walang literal na Church of Christ. Pero mayroong mga talata sa Biblia na nagtumutukoy doon. Alipa, sabi ng Panginoon, I will build my church. My church. Kanina yun, Church belonging to Christ. Church of Christ, di ba? Necessary influence yun. This is my house. Halimbawa sa akin. This is my house. Pwede na yan sabihin, this is the house of Lord Yusalunga. That's the same. Nang sabihin ng Panginoon, this is the church of God which I, which I bought with my own blood. Masayang po natin eksaktong uh, quotations. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Ito ang mababasa. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which He purchased with His own blood. Alam niyo, sino yung Diyos doon? Hindi ang Ama. E kung Ama, hindi naman tumulong tugo ng Ama. Di ba? The church of God, the word God in that phrase refers to Jesus. May sabi niya, because... He purchased with his own blood. Only Jesus became a man and shared his blood. He was in the nature of God. Salangit, but he took the form of a man and died on the cross. So he purchased the blood with his own blood. So just don't hindi ang ama pag this Christo. Depende sa context. That being just because we read the word God, it means the Father. That's not so. That is not so all the time. So yung makita natin, Pag marami, Church of God. Pag konti, pag isa, Church of God. So Romans 16, 16, the churches of Christ, the churches of Christ, greet you. Plural. Kung ang churches of God, plural, ay nagiging Church of God, kung nagigisa ang kongregasyon, ay hindi same. Church of Christ, pag nagigisa. So the Church of Christ is found in the Scriptures. If the Church was purchased by Christ with His own blood, it belongs to to Christ, the Church of Christ, because Christ is God, Church of God. Hindi ba? Very simple. 
Yung po nagpipili, those who argue that the name should be Church of God and not Church of Christ because we cannot find the Church of Christ specifically in the Scriptures. They are making Apostle Paul to contradict himself. Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, the Churches of Christ grip you. The same Apostle Paul wrote the Thessalonians, be you, you, you are imitators, be imitators of the church of God in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. The churches of God are the same as the churches of Christ. Because there is only one church. Specifically, it's called the church of Christ because Christ bought the church with his own blood. It is called the church of God because it is not the church of man. And the builder is Christ and is God. Church of God. Kamisan, the church of God refers to the Father because the Father is God. The church of Christ is the same as the church of God. Period. So, yun dapat na pangalan. Now, there are man-made names. Baptist Church, um, Presbyterian Church, um, Lutheran Church, the Roman Catholic, etc. Those names are not found in the Scriptures. Wala po sa Biblia yung mga pangalan na yun. Those names did not come from God. It came from men. Iba't na makikilalanin ng Panginoon ang blessing hindi niya itinatal. So, Church of God, Church of Christ, the same. At ang mga lagad, the disciples are called Christians. Christians. They are not called by another name, but Christians. With their relationship with, the, with, with one another, they are called brethren. With their relationship with the Father, they are called children of God. But because they are followers of Christ, they are called the disciples. But the disciples are specifically called Christians. I say at chapter 62, verse 2, there is a prophecy for a new name. Isayin po natin. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2. Ito po ating mababasa. Ito. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness. All kings, your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You will be called by a new name. Kasi nai natin, ang kausap, ang kausap ng Diyos dito ay ang mga taga-Israel. So the Israelites will be called by a new name. And that name will be named after the Gentiles as sin God's righteousness. Ibig sabihin, Pag nakilala ng mga Gentiles, ang katuwiran ng Diyos. And God's righteousness is the gospel. In Romans chapter 1, verse, verses 16 to verse 17, this is what we read. Ano po? Sayin natin. Ito sa Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 16 to verse 17. Ito masayin natin. For I, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to ev for everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God. When the Gentiles shall see your righteousness. The righteousness of God is the gospel. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So when the, God, when the Gentiles would, should have seen the gospel then there there will be a new name that will be called to the to the disciples atanin pangalan na yon this name shall be born by paul because paul was sent by the lord to the gentiles is the apostle to the gentiles peter was the gen was the apostle to the jews but paul was was a uh, was the prophet to the gentiles it doesn't mean that Paul did not preach to the Jews. He did. But he was sent generally to the areas of the Gentiles. So, dito po sa Acts chapter 9, verse 15, 
to verse 16, ito ang ating mababasa. But the Lord said to him, Paul, go for he's a chosen vessel of mine to bear to bear my name before si Ananias pa lang, before my before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Paul will be sent to the Gentiles. And Paul will preach to the Gentiles. After the Gentiles have seen the righteousness of God, after the Gentiles have become Christians, then there will be a new name. And yun ang sinasabi sa atin. On Acts chapter 11 verse 26, this is the fulfillment of the new name. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. They were first called Christians. Before, they were called disciples. Now these disciples are specifically called Christians. Now the name Christian did not come from man. It came from God. Nung mag-aral po si Paul kay Agrippa, tinanggap ni Pablo yung pangalan na yun. When Paul preached to Agrippa, Paul accepted the name Christian. For the king, before whom I, I also speak freely, knows these things. For I am convinced that none of these kings escape, escapes his attention since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that, that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and to altogether as such I am, except for this change, such I am a Christian. So, disciples of Christ are called Christians and no other name. Nintandaan po natin. Yung pong pangalan na yun is a noble name. It came from the Lord. It came from God. Mangita natin. James chapter 2 verse 7, basahin natin. Huwag na, daw natin sirain sira ng marangal na pangalan na ibinigay ng Diyos. Basahin natin. So, James uh, chapter 2 verse uh, seven. Uh, ano po? Yan po ang ating mababasa. James chapter 2 verse 7. Do they, do, do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? The noble name by which you are called, that's the name Christian. The noble name came from God. First Peter chapter 4 verse 16 Ating at ating mamasahe, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. In other translation, in this name. Let him glorify God in this name. What name? Christian. So individually, the members of the church are called Christians. As an assembly, as a group, it is called the Church of Christ or Church of God. You know, makikita natin, those are the names we will find taught in the New Testament. There are no, the New Testament teaches no other names except those names. So, kung sasabihin po natin, if you are faithful to the Lord, we should learn not to go beyond what is written. So, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 6, Paul uh, used Paul and Apollos as figures so he could teach those principles with the Lord, with the disciples in Corinth should learn. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, now these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up 
in on behalf of one against the other. Learn not to go beyond what is written. Hindi tayo pwedeng umigit sa nakasulat ng what is written regarding the name of the church, church of Christ, it belongs to Christ. Because Christ is God, church of God. The name of individual members of the church, the, the, the name of the disciples is Christian. No other name. So if you use other names, you go beyond the doctrine of Christ. Lalabas po tayo sa Aral Cristo. So you know, the name, that's the first identifying mark. The name of the church, the name of the disciples, or the members of the church individually. Yung po isang marka, marka yan. Siyempre, pag iba na yung pangalan, if the name of the church is different from Church of Christ, or Church of God, then definitely the church do not, does not belong to Christ. It belongs to someone else. Maybe it belongs to the one who found it or who began the church. But definitely it doesn't belong to Christ. Um, when Larry Hayfley was debating a Baptist, the Baptist said, we are also a church of Christ. That's that's the big mistake that that Baptist preacher made, because Brother Larry Hayfley did not let him go. He said, Brother Hayfley said, "Remember, he said that that you are also a church about a church of Christ." Then when he came back, he said, "If you are a church of Christ, why is your what why why is it in your building? the 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 name is Baptist Church." The name is different from another name, then it's not the same. Common sense. So, you said, being, if you want to be faithful to, to Christ, the church doesn't belong to us, it belongs to Christ. And because we are following Christ or we are disciples of Christ, we should be named after our teacher, which is, who is Christ. Christian, we are bought by Christ, by his blood, so we belong to Christ. So, are, we are Christian. We are Christians, individually Christian. The church belongs to, belongs to Christ. He bought it by his own blood. It belongs to Christ, it's the church of Christ. If not, why not? So you makita natin, that's what the Bible teaches regarding the names, the name of the church, regarding the name of the members of the church or the disciples of Christ. Church of Christ. The Church of God, because Christ is God, and Christians. How about another mark, identifying mark, would be worship. The worship of the one true church. If you, if you, if you go and visit different churches, they have different worship. They have different forms, modes, manners of worshiping God, which they allegedly believe in there are there are churches which are solemn in their worship there are, there are churches which are very noisy and disorderly in their worship and there are churches which are a combination of both you know what does the bible teach about the worship of the one true church in other words if your worship is not the same as the worship of the church built by Christ, then your worship is not the worship being commanded by the Lord. Remember, the Lord is the head of all things in the church. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 to verse 23 is the head of the body, the church. is the head of all things in the church, which is body. The fullness of him fills all in all. So, yun makikita natin. So, what is the worship? Of the one true church when we worship we praise God we praise Jesus we praise the Holy Spirit but if we worship in a manner not prescribed by the Lord by God then our worship will not be accepted remember in the Old Testament Nadab and Abihu offered a different form of fire when they burned 
They were innocents. They were instantly, immediately killed by God because they did not obey the proper mode of burning incense, which is worship, which is worship in the Old Testament. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. A simple matter, the kind of fire. There is a profane fire, a fire not commanded by the Lord, and the Lord killed them. So not all worship will be accepted by the Lord. When Jesus met a Samaritan woman, Beside a beside a well, Christ said, on verse twenty three to verse twenty four. But the but the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God the Spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The form of worship which the Father will accept is by worship in spirit and in truth. In spirit means our spirit, not the Holy Spirit, our spirit. We worship in our spirit, the inner man. The inner man worship the Lord. Our emotion, our, our minds are devoted to the Lord when we worship. And in truth, Truth meaning the words of the Lord. What does the Lord commanded in worship? Those are the things that we should do. Whatever the Lord commanded for us to do in worship, we, we, we must do it devoutly, sincerely, in our, in our hearts and mind, our spirit. Worship in spirit and in truth. If we worship in the truth, we, we observe the proper manner of worship, but our spirit is far from the Lord while we're doing the worship, that worship is not acceptable. On the other hand, if we are worshiping God in a manner that, that He did not prescribe or command it, but we are very sincere in our spirit, that worship is not also acceptable to God. Kung tayo sumasambahan, tama yung ginagawa natin, pero wala naman sa ating kalooban, ay hindi tatanggapin ng Diyos yung ating pagsamba. On the other hand, kung ang ginagawa natin ay mali, kahit tayo sincere sa ating ginagawa, hindi rin tatanggapin ng Diyos yung pagsamba na yun. It should be both a worship in spirit and in truth. Now that worshiping in spirit and in truth is not the Old Testament worship. It's a different kind of worship. On, the, on John chapter 4, verse 21 to verse 22, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, According, this is according to the Old Testament worship, worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for the salvation is of the Jews. The Jews, salvation came from the Jews. It, it was prophesied in the Old Testament. So the Jews supposedly know what they do. So time will come that people will not worship God in Jerusalem nor in other, any other place. The Jerusalem worship is the Old Testament worship. So worshiping spirit and truth is not referring to the Old Testament worship. It's a new form of worship revealed in the New Testament. Not all worship will be accepted. Di lahat na pagsaba tatagapin ng Diyos. Tagapin natin yan. Yan ang totohanan. When Jesus saw the Jews in his, during his personal ministry, he observed that these Jews did not really worship God according to the Old Testament. 
Christ said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 to 9, This, this people, the Jews, draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Hindi lang yan, not only that, not only that the Jews, the Jewish people were hypocritically worshiping God, they also worship God not according to the doctrines set forth by God during their time. And in vain they worship me, teaching us doctrines the commandments of men. When we teach us doctrines the commandments of men, our worship, however sincere, will be accepted. On the other hand, if we do what God prescribed, but we do it hypocritically, our hearts is far from the Lord, that worship is not also going to be accepted. So not all worship will be accepted. So hindi lahat ng pagsama itatanggapin ng Diyos. So the question is, what is the right form of worship? Anong tamang paraan ng pagsamba? That's a very important question. How did the original church built by Christ worship God? Paano yung tunay na iglesia tinatag ng Panginoon ay sinamba din ng Diyos? Walang well, una, first, there was teaching or preaching. We emphasize teaching and preaching. Not making stories, not making anecdotes, not making, um, tawag doon yung, when you try to um, inspire people. Hindi ganun, it's teaching and preaching the doctrine of Christ. We are teaching people what Jesus taught, what Jesus commanded us to do. What are those things which we need to believe according to the Lord? In other words, the doctrine of Christ. We have to teach the doctrine of Christ. When we go beyond the doctrine of Christ, then Christ is not with us. Yung po sa 2 John 9, na po. Sa 2 John 9, uh, mas maganda po, tignan natin yung American Standard Version para mas accurate po yung salin na yun uh, kesa sa ibang ginagamit natin ngayon. Ang uh, nakalagay po doon, when we go beyond and that's it abide in the doctrine of Christ, we do not have God. Yun ang sinasabi ng American Standard Version. Ngayon, dito po sa New King James, when we transgress, masayin natin. The second John 9, ngayon po na nasa labas, <laughs> nasa tabi po kami kasi ng isang main road, kaya minsan maingay po rito sa paligid po namin. Okay. Whoever transgresses or we, we goes, goes beyond and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ as both the Father and the Son. So we have to teach and preach the doctrine of Christ. The Apostle Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 we cannot preach any other gospel aside from the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Christ is the gospel of Christ. Galatians 1.8 But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Or anathema, say basali. Let him be, let him be accursed. Even if an angel, or even an apostle, preach any other gospel than the gospel of Christ, he will be accursed. So we cannot preach any other gospel, okay, yun po ay any other doctrine. So in the New Testament worship, there is teaching and preaching. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, those first Christians, yung unang mga Christiana, they worship, of course, according to the truth revealed by the apostles. Ito po ating mababasa. And they continued steadfastly. Not only they continued, but they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. 
doctrine or in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. When Paul, when Paul and his companions worship with the church in Troas, he preached. Say nothing. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. Paul preached. So there is preaching, there is teaching. Now the Lord did not reveal how we will teach or how we will preach. So there are expedients which we can choose. Kaya nga meron tayong Bible class. Then we have the message or the sermon. Those are not specified in the scriptures, but they are authorized through generic authority. Because though God commanded the church to teach and preach and worship, He did not teach how we will do it. So God, God gave us the liberty to do it. But the church will do it. So there's teaching and preaching of the doctrine or gospel of Christ. We do not preach any other doctrine. The Church of Christ does not have its own doctrine. The Church of Christ does not make its, its her doctrine. They teach the doctrine of Christ. So we, there is no such thing as Church of Christ doctrine. We teach the doctrine of Christ. Kasi pag sinabing Church of Christ doctrine, it, impl it implies, ginawa natin yun. The Church made the doctrine. It's like the Baptist doctrine or the Presbyterian doctrine. We do not have the Church of Christ doctrine. We only have the doctrine of Christ. So there is teaching in worship. There is preaching in worship. There is fellowship, koinonia, common sharing. The Acts, Acts chapter 2 verse 42 uses the word koinonia or fellowship or common sharing. That refers later on to the collection. So Acts chapter 2 verse 42, they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine, in fellowship, in koinonia, in common sharing. That's giving. Yung po pagbibigay. Yung fellowship. Yung po sa Acts 2 42, they used koinonia, fellowship. So 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, it was more, it is more specific now concerning the collection for the saints. As I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. You must. Then you say must. That's the only way you should do it. On the first day of the week. On the first day of the week. Not every every day. Or any other day in the week, on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. The first day of the week. Let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. So every first day of the week, we make, we give. There's a collection during worship. It's only on the first day of the week. There's no specific percentage specific there's no specific percentage it is a more difficult form of giving in the old testament it was 10 percent not in the new testament there is no specific percentage it is according to the blessing that god has given us it is a matter of faith in second corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 it is, a, it is a verse that tells us how we should give. How we should give. What will be the basis of our giving to the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So let, let, let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Pag nagbibigay tayo, hindi tayo pinipinitan. Tayo po ay kusang loob na nagbibigay. Ayon sa ipinasya ng ating puso. 
as he purposes in his heart, meaning as he studied very carefully, as he prayed over it, what he should give to the Lord according to the blessing that God has given us. So, magikita natin, balik tayo sa, let's go back to return to second, said first Corinthians 16, on the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something as said, storing up us, he may prosper according to the prosperity that the Lord has given us. So, that's how we should give. In other words, before Sunday comes, we already have decided what we will give to the Lord. We do not give right on Sunday. Before Sunday comes, we already have decided what we should give to the Lord. That belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to us anymore. So you makikita na pagbibigay si Biblia. There is no tithes, tithes. In the scriptures, tithing is commanded in the Old Testament. It was not commanded to Christians. It was commanded to the Israelite people under the Old Testament law. The Apostle Leviticus, uh, chapter 27, verse, verses 32 to verse 34. Ito ang ating, the last chapter of the book of Leviticus, chapter 27. Yung po ang pinakalas na chapter sa kalat na yun. Now and now, and concerning the fight of the herd or the flock, of whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. He shall not inquire whether it is good or bad, nor shall he exchange it. And if he exchanges it at all, then both it and the one exchanged for it shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses. For the children of Israel on Mount Sinai, not for Christians, but for the children of Israel under the Old Testament law. Alam po natin, the Old Testament law was already abrogated when Christ died on the cross. So we are not under the Old Testament law. We are under the law of Christ. Yung po sinabi sa 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 21, Paul said, it belongs to the law of Christ. Basahin natin. To those who are without laws, without law, very open parenthesis, not being without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law, but under law, the law of Christ, in other translation. So when we give, we give according to our the blessings God given us, blessing God has given to us, and as we thought, as thought about it, very carefully considered it, and prayed over to the Lord. And then also, there is the Lord's Supper, or the breaking of bread. The Lord's Supper is refers to the origin, the Passover Supper, the last Passover Supper of the Lord. Breaking of bread refer, is a synecdoche. The breaking of bread is referred to, but it also, is, it also includes the drinking of the fruit of the vine. Or it is called communion. Because it is a fellowship with the body and blood of the Lord. So communion, Lord's Supper, or breaking of bread. It, it, that is a part of the worship of the original church built by Christ. There are churches which do not observe the Lord's Supper. Now you are, you are not doing what the Lord commanded. There is a literal Lord's Supper in the scriptures. I mean, eating the unleavened bread, symbolizing the sinless body of Christ, and drinking the, the grape juice or signifying the blood of Christ. Matthew chapter 26, verse um, 26 to 29, Matthew. This is the Passover supper on which, over which the Lord introduced the Lord's Supper. To his disciples. Say po natin. And as they were eating, eating the Passover meal, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Not literally, but it symbolizes his body. Then he took the cup, this is metonymy, cup 
is named when it refers to the grape juice and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you for this is my, my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins so there is the eating of the unleavened bread remember this is the feast of the unleavened bread this is the passover meal this is our 26 verse 7 now on the first of the first of unleavened bread that's the literal translation that's the literal, that's what is literal in the Greek. Wala po yung day of the feast. I say the first of unleavened bread begins with the Passover, then followed by the feast of the unleavened bread. Now on the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, now the, the day of the feast is italicized. The disciples came to Jesus saying to him, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? So the bread is unleavened. It signifies the sinless body of Christ. First Corinthians chapter 6, 5, 6, 11 signifies sin. Do you not know that a little leavens will live leavens the whole lump? Can you? If some small sin can influence the whole church. So leaven signifies sin. So unleavened bread signifies just the pure and sinless body of Jesus. Matthew 26, verse 20, the cup which we drink is not the cup, but the, the contents. The contents is the grape juice. Verse 29, when I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine. Fruit of the vine, you cannot, you cannot drink grapes. You drink the juice from the grape. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So we eat of the unleavened bread and drink of the grape juice. Those are the elements of the Lord's Supper. Now the Lord's Supper is observed every first day of the week. Acts 20 verse 7. Acts 20 verse 7. Acts 20 verse 7. Acts 20 verse 7. Now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. Did the Lord and the, did the disciples ate an unleavened bread literally? Did the disciples on the night when Christ was betrayed drank literally a grape juice? The answer is yes. So there is literal eating of unleavened bread and literal drinking of grape juice during worship. Period. And there are prayers, of course. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They, and the disciples continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. So we pray during worship we pray there's there, there there are prayers offered when we come gathered together to worship the lord on the first day of the week and then we, the, the new testament church sang praises to the lord they sang they sang praises to the lord colossians 316 the same colossians uh, 316 in the book Colossians 3.16, ang mababasa natin sa Colossians 3.16, yun po ang makikita natin dito, talagang ano lang, umawit lang po yung mga alaga, they, they just sang. Wala po tayong makikita kung uh, tumamit sila ng pinatawag nilang uh, panugtog o instrumental music. They were, there was no musical accompaniment when the disciples worship the Lord. Masayin natin sa Colossians uh, chapter 3 at ang aking babasayan po yung American Standard Version uh, ito, uh, sa aking pananaw ito pinaka-accurate na sa alin dito. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Singing with your Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So, we sing 
in our hearts to the Lord. We do not use instrumental music. We just sing. So we sing with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19, the same. Masibasayin po natin. Ephesians 5 19, mas maliwalag po. Maliwalag, basahin natin. Alright. Ito po ang ating this is one we could read from the American Standard Version. Ito. Speaking one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. We do not make melody with our hands. We, we make melody with our hearts to the Lord. So we just sing. The disciples in the New Testament just sang praises to the Lord. The New Testament disciples did not use instrumental music in worship. If so, where does it teach that the New Testament disciples used instrumental music in worship? There is not. Our praises to God are fruits of our lips. Tignan natin sa Hebrews 13 verse 15. Therefore by Him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, what is the sacrifice of praise? That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. Singing is a fruit of our lips. Instrumental music is not. When we sing, we teach. We admonish. Ephesians 5.19, speaking, we speak to one another. Speaking to one another in Psalms and names. And spiritual song singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3.16, ito ang ating makikita. Let the word of God of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing. We teach and admonish in psalms and hymns and spiritual song. In our singing, we are teaching and admonishing. You, do not, you cannot admonish and teach with instrumental music. So, instrumental music is not commanded in the New Testament. It, is com it was commanded in the Old Testament, but not in the New Testament. If not, if yes, where it is? Where is it? So natin makikita. Now we are interested to, we are interested to hear from those who use instrumental music in worship. You, where, where do you find Christians using instrumental music during the New Testament? Now, but they all, they all come back to the Old Testament. That's very strange. If the if instrumental music was commanded in the New Testament, then you can read a, a book, a verse in the New Testament teaching or commanding instrumental music. But there is not. So they go back to the Old Testament, citing those verses which were commanded not to Christians, but to Jewish people under the Old Testament law. Because if there is a New Testament verse teaching instrumental music, they will cite it, of course. But because they cannot find one, they go back to the Old Testament. And if you do that, we fall from grace. Galatians chapter 5. That's very clear. If you justify using the law of Moses, then we fall from the grace of the Lord. Very simple. Very clear. You have become strange. So we are separated. You have become strange from Christ. You will attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace by the law. The old covenant. The old testament. The old testament law. The law of Moses in the old testament. So the new testament worship. The worshiping spirit and truth. Is composed of teaching and preaching. The gospel or the doctrine of Christ. There is fellowship or giving. There is uh, Lord's Supper, breaking of bread. There is prayers, or there are prayers. And there is singing, giving praise through songs in worship. That is the pattern of worship in the New Testament. So, then, ang ganja muna tayo. We no longer have time to discuss the other marks, identifying marks of the one true church will do it on the Lord willing on Friday night. We will discuss the other marks, the, the work of the church, 
the organization of the church. Iyon po yung ating pag-aaralan if the Lord will give us the doctrine of the law of the Mount Church Church. Yun ang ating pag-aaralan sa susunod na bibigyan tayo ng pagkakaan. Those we will study when if the Lord gives us the opportunity because we do not know what will happen tomorrow. Do you know? Let us pray to the Lord that He will still give us the opportunity to teach His truth, His gospel to the lost ones in sin. Marami siya lahat po sa inyong matyagang pagkinig. Thank you very much for your patient listening to, our, to the teaching of the words of the Lord. Tignan po natin ang mga... Ah, meron po ang nakalum, nakalumutan na po na mamaya po ating i-discuss. May po, meron po kasing comments si Mr. Aldungaw na hindi ko napansin pero may mga bagay na nakita ko na hindi tama. Ayon po sa balalak sila tama. Mamaya po i-discuss natin yung comments na yun doon sa nakaraang video natin. Ano po. I mean, I'm just being honest. Tingnan po natin ng comments. Aldia Nakampo. Uh, hindi po siya nang una. Ano po? Um, Ibanez Senior Sunny. Good evening, brethren. God bless you, brother. God bless you also, brother. Loli Martinez. Good evening po, mga patid. Watching from San Vicente Church of Christ. Alcala, Pangasinan. God bless you po, brother Lord. May magkakaroon po ng isang um, one-day gospel meeting dyan po sa San Vicente Church of Christ. Alcala, Pangasinan sa February 9. So, kung kayo po, ay, ay, February 8, if you are near um, Alcala, Pangasinan, San Vicente, you are your welcome to attend. Ano po? Uh, of course, the church there will be willing to receive you. Roy Bebs Capilli, uh, pinagpalang gabi po mga kapatid. May hinig, pinagpalang gabi rin sa Brad. Glory Garcia, good evening po. Hindi ko lang kung mag-anak po ito kasi ang aking middle name, Garcia. Ano po? Jojo Ocampo, magandang gabi po. Robinson de Pulveras. Good eve, mga kapatid. Imelda Aguto Tabihe. Good PM po, mga kapatid. Watching from Montalban, Rizal. Yung po ay Rodriguez na po ngayon niya. Batong, Badong par, Parbo. Maayang gabi, Higson. Maayang gabi, Pud. Simple Castro. Good evening to everyone. Good evening also to Brother Simple. Rafael Ortiz. Good evening po sa ating lahat. Johnson Ramin. Naibang nga rabi, naibang, naibang nga rabi, rabi tayo amin ayatin nga kakabsat from Balesters ka gayan. Uh, ito po, ibang versyon na po. Sa ang ibig niya sabihin, magandang gabi, mga minamahal kong kapatid, yan, mga kapatid, mula sa Balesters ka gayan. Nasa, tulo, nasa tuktok po yan ng Luzon, ano po. Na, mga sa panatay, nakaabot na po kami dyan. Old Jan Ocampo, good evening po. Good evening din, Brother Ojan. Eleanor Ortiz, good evening po mga kapatid. Listening, Roy Bebs Capile. Uh, meron siyang comments. We are called Christians as a follow of Christ, added in the church which Christ built. Or rather, or otherwise, we should be called Gandians. If Christ is not the builder, as the other believes so. Okay. Nedia Villamin, maayang gabi sa tanan. Alala po ang tanong. Ay, balikan ko po yung comment ni Mr. Um, Aldunga, with, with, with due respect, dahil siya po ay nagbigay ng kanyang comment. We respect it, Mr. Aldunga, pero we can comment on his comment. Ito po ang kanyang comment, or ay, ito po ay aking kinopya talaga, word for word. Thanks po, malina pa rin po na ang ultimate truth na nagtayo na iglesia ay ang Diyos Ama. Dahil siya nagtayo ng lahat ng bagay, galing sa kanyang lahat ng mga bagay, pati si Christ, galing sa kanya. Pag yung mayari ng building, kasangkapan niya yung engineer, architect, at ibang mga tao para matayo ang building, ang Diyos ama, kasangkapan si Kristo para matayo ang iglesia. Hindi po tama yun. Number one, hindi galing si Kristo sa ama. Ano bang ibig sabihin ni Mr. Haddong na galing si Kristo sa kanya? Parang, parang mga ano yan, mga saksi ni Jehovah, na nilalang ng Diyos ang ating Panginoon. Dito po sa John chapter 1, verse 1, ano po? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who was the Word? Verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
hindi, hindi galing si Kristus na Diyos. The, the, the word, Jesus, nung nagkatawang tao siya, was with God. Kasama na siya ng Diyos in the beginning. And he was God. He's the same nature as God. Kung if God is eternal, hindi siya nilala. So how can Christ come from God? Hindi pwede yun. Ang totoo niyan, sa Philippians chapter 2, the Father and the Son are equal. They are both in the nature of being God and they are equal. Sige na, basahin po natin. Kaya hindi ko pa lalampasin yung comment na yun kasi marami nakabasa niyan. Eh. Tignan lang po natin kung ano sinasabi ng Biblia. Ano po? We respect those who give comments because they have the right to do so. But you also have the right to comment on their comments. Tignan natin sa Philippians 2. Ano po? Verse 5. At sa nga po sa verse, yung verse 10. Verse 11. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, in the nature of God, yung ibig sabihin, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that is, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus, before he became a man, was equal with the Father. We are both in the nature of God. Paano nang galing ang Panginoon sa Ama? Hindi, hindi, po, hindi tama yan. Di ba? Hindi pwede yan. Jesus is God. So Colossians chapter 1. Sayin po natin. Colossians chapter 1. It opposes verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is before all things. He is the creator of all things. Siyang lumala, actually, hindi naman ang amay. Ang amay nagsabi, siyang lumala, siyang guma. Sa pamagitin nga lang lahat ng mga bagay. So hindi galing sa kanya ang kating Panginoon. Hindi rin totoo na ang ama ang literal na nagtayo. Ang Panginoon nagtayo, di ba? Hindi ba nakasulat, I will build my church? Sino ba nagtayo? Hindi ba ang Panginoon? Kasi natin mababasa ang ama nagtayo. Na mga nagtayo, in the sense na silang tatlo, actually, nang, nang, silang tatlo ang nagkasundo. Kung anong gagawin nila para maligtas ang tao. Sino tatlo? Ang ama, ang anak, at ang Espiritu Santo. Sino nang kasundo? At nang kasundo kung anong gagawin nila? Kung so, nang kasundo, ang Panginoon ang magiging magkakatawang tao. And later, ang Espiritu Santo magpapahayag ng buong katotohanan. At siya, magpa, siya magpapatunay na buong katotohanan sa pamagitan ng mga kalob na galing Espiritu Santo. Hindi pa silang tatlo yan. Kung nang kakaisa. Yun po mababasa natin sa Biblia niyo ba? Paano nangyari na ito sinasabi niya? Ngayon yung sa Hebrews chapter 3, basahin po natin. It's 3 po. Ano po? Okay, basahin natin. Every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Totoo yun. Tandangan natin, sino bang Diyos na ito kayo dito? Meron ba nabasang pamarito? Sinabi lang Diyos. Hindi ba ang lahat ng nilalang ay nilalang na Diyos? Totoo yan. Sino bang gawa? Di ba ang ating Panginoon? 
So kung lahat ng mga bagay ginawa ng Diyos, ang Panginoon ay Diyos. So hindi na ibig sabihin na pag nabasa natin ang Diyos ay Ama. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which will be spoken afterward. But Christ as a son over his own house. Kanina ang bahay yun. Hindi ba sa ating Panginoon ang bahay? So sino nagtayo ng bahay? Hindi ba ang Panginoon? Hindi ba ang Panginoon ay Diyos? O sa lahat ng bagay ginawa ng Diyos? Kaya natin magbabasa ka ma dyan mga puti. So, yung Diyos ay generic kung minsan. Ito'y tumutukoy sa mga sana at si Turo Santo. Unless otherwise, ito ay specified. Um, it's when you begin ng context. Pero dito po, makikita natin, pinag-uusapan ito ng ating Panginoon. Nakikit kay sa kay Moises. Kinukumpara si Kristo kay Moises. Si Moises ay siya'y lingkod sa bahay. Yan, basang isa ba siya'y lingkod. Ang ating point, hindi. Siya'y, siya'y anak na siyang, siya po ang sabi nito, siya ang namumuno sa kanyang sariling bahay. Sino yung bahay niya? Tayo. So kanyang bahay yun? Sa ating Panginoon. Sino nagtayo ng bahay? Ang ating Panginoon. Ang Panginoon by Diyos. Oh. So God did all things. Di ba tama yun? Saan na saan na nakuha yung kaisipan na gano'n? So, Tandaan natin, yung tatlong yan ang tinatawag na nagkakaisang Diyos. Kasi po yung pinanggalingan siguro ni Mr. Dungaw ay dalawa lang ang Diyos sa kanila. Ang Ama at ang ating Panginoon. Pwede ko pari maintindihan ito sinabi niya, si Kristo galing sa kanya. Ano ibig sabihin? Galang galing sa kanya. Kung sinasabi rito, nagtayo ng lahat ng bagay, at, at, at si Kristo galing sa kanya, so si Christo, ang nagtayo kay Kristo siyang Diyos, ang Ama. Hindi na siya, hindi tinuturo ng Biblia po yan. And I'm sorry kay Mr. Dungaw, I do not agree doon sa sinabi niya. I agree doon sa, may isang kinasangkapan, totoo yan, yung mga puzzle, etc. Pwede siya, yung yung ibang bahagi ng comment niya, I do not agree. Ano na explain bakit hindi ko nag agree Dapat po ganun. If you do not agree, we have to we have to say why we do not agree. Yan ang, yan ang respectful disagreement. Di ba? So, yun po. Salamat din kay Mr. Aldo nga sa kanyang uh, comment na yun. Pero, we have to answer it. Dahil hindi po naman tinuturo ng Biblia. O nga po, tama itong kay Roy Bebs. Otherwise, you should, call, you should be called God Diaz. Kasi ang Diyos, ibinigay niya lahat ng kapamahalaan sa ating Panginoon. Sino ang Diyos na nagbigay ng buong kapamahalaan? Sino ang tatlong nagkakaisa ang Diyos? Di ba? Dahil yung, yung sa Matthew 28 verse 18-19, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Na sino yung tatlong yun? May, may, may isang ang pangalan. Hindi ba ang Diyos? Yun ang nagkakaisa ang Diyos. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, salamat kay Roy Webb. Roy Webb is completely. Hindi ko na, hindi na po nag-comment si uh, Mr. Aldo. Uh, anyway, pero nag-comment siya last, ano, so kailangan naman po natin sigutin kasi baka kalahin na mga nakikilig dito sa ating pag-aaral ay tumasakayan tayo sa sinabi niya. Okay, hindi na tagwi. We do we respectfully disagree, mga kapatid. Ayun pong awit na yun ay hindi natin matatagpag sa ibang mga songbook. Wala po yan sa ibang songbook. Maliban lang po dalawa. May hymns for worship. Uh, at saka po yung psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Bagat yung awit na yun, Mandarin and Hall, ay ginawa po ng isang gospel preacher na si Brad, the late brother Don Alexander. Uh, actually, ginawa ko pong uh, mensahe yun. Dahil maganda po yung mensahe ng awit na yun. So, maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, pakikinig. Uh, sa ipagpapatuloy po natin ng ating pag-aaral po sa BMS, sa loob ng Panginoon. At uh, ipagpatuloy natin ng ating uh, pag-aaral po sa original na iglesia ang itinatag ng ating The original church built by Christ It still exists sa pagkandyan pa rin ng salita ng Diyos. Yan ang binhi ng, yan ang binhi. At kung ating itinatanin, yung binhi, ang tutubo po ang iglesia ng ating uh, Panginoon. So tayo po ay manalangin. Uh, mga banal, mali po kami nagpapasalamat sa inyo sa araw na inyong binigay sa amin. Kami po yung mingi sa inyo sa gabing ito ng 
magandang kapayagahan para sa inyong mga katawan. Upang sana bukas kayo po ay magising at, aming, at hopefully may karagdagan ng buhay na ibibigay mo sa amin na Diyos. Nawa'y gugulin namin na ngayong panahon, hindi lamang sa inyong mga pasariling pangangilangan, kundi rin po sa pagpupuri at paglilingkod sa inyong Diyos. Bigyan niyo kami ng oras ng ngayong pagkikipag-usap, panalangin sa inyo. Bigyan niyo kami ng oras sa pag-aral ng mga sanita. Yan ang paraan ng inyong pakikipag-usap sa amin kung ano yung kalooban. At bigyan niyo kami ng mat mat matatag, mat matibay na pananampalataya ayon sa inyong ipinayag po sa amin. Patawarin niyo kami ama sa inyong mga pagkukulang at ibinadalangin namin lahat ng mga kapatid na nasa pagsubok at sana po sila ay bigyan niyo ng katatagal pa makarakaw sila. Kapag nalalaman namin ama na lahat ng mga ito ay pasamantalalaman sa mundong ito. At ang aming talagang tahanan ay tahanan ang iyong inanda sa amin sa langit magpakilan. At ang mga bangin ito ay manginig at pinapanalain sa pamagitan namin Panginoon. Amen. Maraming salamat mga patid. Magingat po tayo. God bless.